Hey, everyone, say hello. And All goodbye right. for a minute. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, Leslie, and you need to unmute. Okay. Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together on Zoom and on Facebook Live. We believe that everyone is an equal child of God who deserves deep, uh, deep and meaningful connections, a purpose-filled life, and a, and um and love expressed through belonging, service, and justice. I normally have this posted up here. So um, we are an inclusive, loving, and open and affirming community of faith and action, seeking, serving, and celebrating Christ through open minds, willing hands, and committed hearts. And I just learned today that, we, that this is our open and affirming anniversary month. Um, so since 1993, we have been an open and affirming congregation. We strive to be an anti-racist. We strive to be anti-racist and pro-reconciling, and we welcome everyone, regardless of race, color, ancestry, age, ability, gender, sexual, or affectional orientation. So welcome home. And I especially want to welcome our regional minister, Dr. Latanya Bynum. So thank you for preaching for us today. Carrie. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're glad you're all here. We have just a few things to go through before we get started. Um, one, just know we are recording. If um, you do not want to be seen, you can you know, turn off your video. That's OK with us. Um, you are muted just to help with sound quality, but um, we would love for you to participate by using your reaction buttons down below or um, using the chat. Off in the chat room, uh, you can talk to your friends there or make a comment or an encouragement uh, during Signs of Life, which is going to be after the first song. We would love for you to participate in that by uh, sharing with us how you've seen God working in your life in this past week. And um, also during prayers of the people, you can unmute yourself to uh, speak aloud things that are on your heart that you want um, the body to pray for. Um, please fill out our attendance form. I'm going to put it into the chat right now. Uh, that's just how we keep track of who's here. And if you need anything, you can put it there and let us know and we will get uh, in touch with you. And uh, Leslie mentioned, but we are so thankful for our guest preacher today, the Reverend Dr. Latanya Bynum. She's our regional minister um, of the Christian Church in Northern California, Nevada. Um, and she is Pastor Leslie's wife, which we are super excited for um, them to be here. And um, we cannot wait to hear what uh, Reverend Bynum has for us today. So with that, we will move right into our first song.
great song to wake up our service. <laughs> All right. Would love to hear signs of life from you today. I will start while you're thinking. Um, last Sunday, the kids got together for a little Easter egg hunt at the church, and it was just so wonderful to see people in person, to see the kids having fun, um, enjoying something outside and socially distanced and responsible, but still so much fun. <laughs> so that was a huge sign of life. I know for Beatrice and for me, I wanted to thank everyone who was had a hand in participating and getting that together it was really great. Okay, there's mine. Let's hear from one of Di you. Diana has her hand up. Fantastic, Diana. Well, you stole one of mine. But <laughs> my other one is the my friend Dylan that you've all been praying for. He is done with his first week of clinical trials and just celebrated his 18th birthday. Yay. And is fully committed to being around for many more. So thank continue praying, but he's doing really well. And thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for the good report. Sign of life. All right. I'm looking for hands. Anybody? Quickly, oh, I enjoyed the uh, early service on Easter. Thank you very much. Oh, great. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Yes, sign of life. Whenever we can gather. Oh, I see you, Paula. Oops, wait, you're muted. There How's you go. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris and I were in Utah over Easter. And in fact, we did hop on the video for the um, sunrise service. Um, as, but as we're driving through Bryce Canyon, we lost Wi-Fi, so we missed the rest of it. But we, you know, we celebrated Easter hiking through Bryce Canyon and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So. Amen. Love it. Anytime we're out in nature, I feel like that's a sign of life. See all the beauty that this world has. Oh, I see you, Ellie. It's the little things in life that excite me. Like there's a little bird building a nest in the birdhouse right outside my window. <laughs> Love that, definite sign of life. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else wanna share before we move on? Oh, I see you, Diane, gotta unmute, there you go. Um, we had a wonderful um, donation day. Um, we probably had more volunteers than people uh, drove in, but it was okay because a lot of uh, a lot of the diapers were already pre-bought, um, and they were in the office. And uh, then I had actually remembered that I. Um, or we had the pe some people could show up from Lafayette. I forgot that I had told Lafayette about this. <laughs> and we had like three, three volunteers come and bring some more diapers from Lafayette. And, and uh, we hope to do some other projects with them in the future. But oh, um, it, it was fun. And, and, we, and we got hugs from Ellie. We actually hugged, I think, <laughs> the other person that I've ever hugged outside of the family. Um, and uh, it was, uh, and it was fun to see Mike and, um, and uh, Chone, so that was fun. It was a fun time. Fantastic, love it. Thank you for sharing that sign of life. 
Yeah, the more vaccinations we get, the more hugs we can get. So, yes. <laughs> so Kathy and I shared a, she's fully vaccinated and I'm half vaccinated. I get my second shot later this week. Um, so so she said she didn't care and she gave me a hug. So. <laughs> and I did ask for more. permission. I asked for permission before I well, hugged yes. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, always with consent, right? <laughs> right? Right. Always with consent. Wonderful. Ooh, I love, I'm so excited. That's a sign of life. Hugs in our future. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Then I'm going to ask uh, Tim to unmute himself and start us off with the call to worship. Good morning, everyone. God has filled the earth with abundance. How precious the water, how holy the land, how magnificent the creatures and creations. God blessed them to multiply, that there would be enough, that none should go hungry, that all should be sheltered, that no one should be abandoned to suffering. Though systems of evil distort this intention God will bring justice and restore right the rhythms of life. Will you pray with me? Lord of resurrection surprises, open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps. In his name we pray, amen. Now we come to the time of lighting a candle. Throughout the world, lighting candles is a sacred ritual we light a candle for many purposes, to illuminate the darkness, dedicate prayers, to solidify intentions, offer blessings, evoke the spirit, and simply to nourish grateful living. We welcome you to light a candle now, as I am doing, to connect you to your inner stillness, and to our community. Feel this connectedness. Slow your pace and offer these moments your full attention. Light your candle as a witness to the presence of the one who is the resurrection and the life. Let this be a sacred time in which we let what has begun gradually grow, binding within us the patience and trust that allows us to tend to our concerns with wisdom.
Amen. I love that song. Will you join me in prayer? Well, actually, before I ask you to join me in prayer, um, this is indeed the time when we have an opportunity to share with one another and with God our joys as well as our concerns. We know that we hold one another, we bear one another's burdens, and we celebrate one another's joys. If there is something that you'd like us to add to the prayer list, be sure to put that in the chat. Um, that's the easiest way for us to capture that so that we can make sure it gets into the prayer list for the intersections. If there is something that you would only like the elders or me to know, either type in Carrie's name, Carrie Little, or my name in the chat, and, um, and then those will come as direct messages to us. So will you join me in prayer? Oh, holy and ever-living and ever-loving God, it has been a week. Last week, we went from parade to commandment, to crucifixion, to waiting, to resurrection. And this week feels like nothing much has happened. But indeed, there is so much that has been happening within us. And we ask you, O oh God, to touch our spirits so that indeed we might be resurrected as well. We lift up all sorts of things that are happening in our world. We celebrate those who are, who are getting vaccinated. And we pray for those who have yet to even be able to schedule their first shot, let alone their second. We pray for countries that have not even received the vaccine and ask, oh God, that, that all the countries um, work together so that the whole world might be vaccinated. Oh God, we, while we celebrate that, we are so aware of all of the ways in which we hurt one another, ways in which we harm one another. And so we ask you, oh God, to touch our hearts and our minds and our spirits so that as we stand with our Asian and Pacific Islands as siblings against, stand against anti-Asian, anti-Pacific Island violence, that that community be strengthened knowing that all communities stand with them. We pray for all those who are, while we are in the grips of the, the trial um, for Derek, regarding Derek Chauvin, um, we also recognize that there are so many other cases that have not made national news. And so we pray for all who are victims of violence racist, racist violence, racist and, 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 and white supremacist violence, ageist violence, gender violence, violence against our trans siblings, for example, just based on who they are. So we ask you, oh God, just to be with us when we hurt one another and grant us resurrection. Oh God, we ask you to be with those who are in leadership, that, that all that is before them, all of the decisions that are before them, which feel to us like they're being tied up in, in political wrangling, Remove those barriers, oh God, so that all, all people 
may be well, all people may be served, all people may, may find new life. Help us to be resurrected. Oh God, we pray for our friends and family and people we do not know. And as we lift up to you our joys and concerns, hear us as we pray for those that are those people and those situations that are on our hearts. Hear us as we pray. Tamiya Nazire, Olo Duarme, Caleb. Efarin, Philip Noel, Karen, Rod and Paula, and Joyce. Sam and Ruchan. Those of us who are recovering from surgery or about to have surgery. Amen. Renee and Jacob, as they enter the last months of seminary, the last month of seminary. Phyllis, Adam, Nick and Zach, Lisa, Caitlin, Trevor, Ruhan, Sam, Jeremiah Rose, Gail. Lou, oh God, you have heard the, you have heard what we have written or what we have spoken aloud, but you also hear what is on our hearts and on our minds. You hear us when we can't even speak. And so, oh God, we lift up before you all of these joys and all of these concerns. We offer, the, we offer these prayers in the name and the spirit of Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray and use the words most familiar to you. Our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jacob. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> um, today, in Worship and Wonder, uh, we are going to uh, be focusing on the affirmation that God is everywhere, within me and around me. Uh, we'll be starting with uh, Luke chapter 17, uh, verses 20 and 21. The kingdom of God uh, is not something that you can point at and say, look, here it is, or, or there it is, uh, but it's within you and within each of us. And so 
we'll be talking about what that means and what our thoughts are about God and uh, where God is, who God is. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, uh, discussing that with the children this morning. Thank you. Amen. Amen. God invites us in this time to give back a portion of that which God has already given to us. God invites us to bring the fullness of who we are into worship and to share the fullness of who we are and what we have with the world. So it is God's holy invitation that asks us to pause for just a moment and to wonder what we might offer and how we might offer ourselves to the world. Do we offer our time, our presence, kindness, financial support, prayers? We can offer all of it. So in these moments of reflection, what is it that you have come to offer God this day to bring about God's peace on earth? If you've not, if you've not been with us before, because I know we've got a few, a few guests today, if you've not been with us before and you'd like to make a donation, um, simply write um, your check to the church. Um, with the attention Lisa Morgan on the envelope so that Lisa is the one who gets those. Um, if you are using the bill pay option from your, from your bank, again, put attention Lisa Morgan on the envelope. And, um, uh, and thank you, thank you. So here in Christ alone,
Amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you have blessed us with so many good things. May these gifts from us be used to open doors of welcome for all people so they too may experience the joy of abundance and unity. Amen. Emerus, will you bring us the scripture? Today's scripture is from Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. The believers share their possessions. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet. It was distributed to each as any had need. Good morning. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for this time, for this day, for this moment, for this means of worshiping you in spirit, in truth, in joy, in sorrow, in all that we bring. Make us bold now to pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts might be acceptable to you, O oh God, our strength, our redeemer. We offer this prayer and our very lives to the one who is raised from death into life eternal, that we might be raised up with him. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, amen. Thank you for the invitation to preach this morning. I've long believed that anybody who is a pastor deserves the Sunday after Easter as a day off. Uh, but that often means as somebody who's not a uh, parish pastor doesn't have a congregation that I get invited to step in, and I am happy to do that. Uh, it's always good to be with you in worship, to gather with you for prayer and communion, and uh, I feel those of you who are battling allergies in this season, a sure sign of spring for me is that I begin to cough, and so let me just ask your forgiveness in advance. Last Sunday, we declared that the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Today, we consider how it is that we live in the shadow of the empty tomb and how we stand as church together. Now, I must confess, as somebody born and raised into the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, I must confess that I cringe a little bit when I hear us when I hear disciples described as a church in which you can do what you want and believe what you want, that statement is a little too anything goes for me. I certainly affirm that each of us is free to respond to God as the spirit leads us. I also affirm that there are some foundational things we hold in common for instance, that Jesus is God's anointed, that God created us all and loves us all, <clears throat> that the Holy Spirit moves through us, that we are called to share and to bear the good news of Jesus Christ, that all means all, no matter who we are or how we are embodied. We are God's and God is ours. And the church is at its best when it is more inclusive than when it is not. Always with the expectation of accountability. That's one of the ways that we stand together. 
This word we heard from Acts this morning helps us to do just that. The Acts of the Apostles is the story of the church in its earliest days. It is the story of the church in formation after the resurrection, after Pentecost, which we'll celebrate in a few weeks. The church in its earliest days was trying to figure out how it is that they would fulfill its mandate from Jesus to go into the world and to share the good news. Like the early church, we too are the church forming and reforming and living and reviving after the resurrection and after the Holy Spirit has come to us. And it is still with that mandate to those of us who belong to Christ and believe in his mission in the world to go out and live the good news and make a difference in our world. Then and now the church had its challenges. Then. There was opposition from the temple authorities and who arrested and interrogated the, the apostles and so reminded those who listened to the apostles teaching and preaching that to be a believer in Jesus carried some threat, some political threat. There was always this threat of arrest and indeed so many were that hung over the preaching and practice of being a follower of Jesus Christ. To speak truth to power from a place of faith, especially when that truth is about standing with the least and those whose voices have been silenced has always been a dangerous thing. Yet they did it then and we are called to do it now. There was also the stress of earning a living, no doubt, difficult under the best of economic circumstances in first century Palestine, now made more difficult because the population of Jerusalem grew as people from all over the known world were coming to find work and to make a living there. In a country, in this country, we live in a country in which the Urban Institute projects that the U.S. poverty rate in 2021 will be about 13.7%, even accounting for unemployment due to the pandemic. In a nation of 328 million people, 13.7% means that more than 40 million people live without the resources needed to adequately, adequately and safely provide for themselves and their families. The high poverty rate and a diminished safety net makes no sense in the richest country in the world. Then as now, people struggle to be able to make a living and secure a foundation of safety of housing and work and good food for their families. So what do we do? Well, Acts chapter four, verse 32 through 35, as we heard, tells us that the church came together, that when it did, there was not a needy person among them. Why? Because at its root, the church then and the church now shows our love of God by the way we care for one another. Acts gives us a portrait of the church acting together to care for one another. There were, they were of one heart, and one soul, they had a sense of unity and no one claimed private ownership, we read, exclusively that is, they had all things in common. Now what that means is that the people shared their resources, that what they gave to the church belonged to the whole church. Did they have any private property at all? Of course they did. People owned houses which they opened for worship Women like Lydia owned businesses who gave and then gave generously to the church. Farmers continued the practice of giving the first 10% of their harvest to the church, just as their ancestors had given their first fruits to the temple. Through it all, the church stood together. Did they agree all the time? 
surely not. We've seen Paul's letters. We know they didn't agree all the time, but they were able somehow to continue to work together. So how did they do it? And what can we learn from them? They were about really just three things. First, they were about proclamation. The apostles, the teachers and preachers of their day gave, gave testimony to the power of the resurrection. God, who raised Jesus from death to life, raises up in us the power and possibility that we have one more chance to get things right, one more chance to do better than we have done, one more chance to make amends when we need to, one more chance. We have, we have the opportunity for new life. We can be made new. We have an opportunity for new hope. God continues to speak about a sense of confidence in the future, and we can build a new and renewed community. As things open up for us, we will find ourselves finding ways to stay connected online. That'll be a sign of renewal. We have the opportunity to live as anti-racist, pro-reconciling people. Sadly, every single day, we have the opportunity to say, what do I believe racial justice looks like in this country? What does it mean for us to be a reconciled and united people? We can look at the needs around us and ask not only what would Jesus do, but how can I show the love of Jesus to everybody I meet. So they were about proclamation. The second thing they were about is practice. The early church was filled with people from every income, women and men, young and old city people and rural people. They realized that Jesus had called them to be one as God and Jesus were one. We declare the oneness of the church and of community, even as we live in the sometimes difficult realities that we continue to see. And because we see them, we name the sin and systems and behavior that threaten to undo us. Racism and misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, all say to people, you are less than somebody else. You were made inferior and you don't belong. Now, all human beings are flawed. We all sin and fall short of the glory God intends for us. We break faith with God and one another. But our sinfulness is about our behavior. It's not about our skin tone. It's not about our, bio our biology. Still, God loves us. And I believe the church's doors should be open, that the table that we set every week should be laden with food for the soul and it should be spread for all of us. And so the people were about community, about practicing community. How did they do that? They showed what it means to live their faith. In the face of their lack of resources, the church was there to help. They fed the hungry, they gave water to the thirsty, they provided shelter and safety for those who were in danger. The church was the people of God they had been called to be. How blessed are we that because we know God, we can do the same things. The third thing they did was to find power in that very community that helped them stay together. When there was a need, the church responded for the good of the whole community. They are about giving up a piece of themselves for the common good. When Jerry Lang was with you all last year, he reminded us that our church treasures are held in common for mission and ministry. And we can't duplicate the first century church in the 21st century, but surely we have learned from them and we can make use of what they did and what we have learned. They had a sense of purpose. They preached resurrection. They held their possessions together. They took care of the needs of one another. 
Surely that is our call too. When I was a pastor in Columbus, Ohio, I would tell people as they were preparing for baptism or church membership that, that I would encourage them always and, and indeed expected them to do four things. To pray for the church every single day. To show up for worship, to praise the risen God and Christ regularly to be part of the mission and ministry of the church and to be that is to be part of a small group and and to just be present to one another in the region that means come to our retreats send your kids to camp which we pray we will do face to face this summer attend annual gathering next a week from saturday and know that we are grateful for all that you do. I also encourage you to support the church financially as your regional minister. And that's actually the fourth thing, give, actually give money to the church. As your regional minister, I want to encourage you as members of this congregation to, to join me in giving to the place where you worship. Support the regional fund, give to Disciples Mission Fund and special day offerings. And by the way, I'll tell you something that I just learned yesterday that most of the region doesn't yet know. Our DMF, Disciples Mission Fund giving, our giving to the treasury of the whole church in the United States and Canada was 98 point something of our budget. That's incredible. Even our, our regional steward, Frank Scudero, can't quite believe what you did, but you did it. And I'm so very grateful that you did. I'm grateful for your support of camp and conference and for all of the ways you support the region. I'm grateful because what Matthew chapter 6, verse 21 says is true. Where our treasure is, where that which we hold most dear is, there will our hearts be also. So treasure and hold in your heart that we are grace-filled bearers of the good news that the world needs. Treasure and hold in your heart that we have more than enough when we put our resources together as we are able. Treasure and hold in your heart that it is Jesus moving through people and our leaders along with the Holy Spirit that binds us together. If we are truly a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world as we say we are, then our truth really does say all means all. The Disciples General Board is meeting. I will hop on that call as soon as uh, worship is over today. They began meeting yesterday, and at the conclusion of her State of the Church address, our general minister and president, Teresa Hoard Owens, invited us to join her in imagining God's limitless love. After all, she says, we say we are a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Then let's be the church we say we are. Will you join me, she said earlier, uh, late last year, will you join me in courageously imagining a new church to serve and shape a new world? Silence is not an option. We must continue to speak up to say what is wrong and champion, champion the good. We must never be afraid to speak truth and to make justice happen. God has already given permission to do what is good and what is right, and what is just. How will we align our work to what God has already done? We are commanded to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. How will we shape a society to reflect that love and value for all of us as followers of Jesus? Racism, poverty, economic inequality, ecological devastation, it's all still with us. And we deal with it and we begin to eradicate those things when we work together. The early church has shown us how 
our spiritual ancestors who have brought us to the place where we are has shown us how. The women's, the, what began as the Christian Women's Board of Mission began when women put their resources together, saved their egg money and their milk money, uh, saved their sewing money, saved money however they could to support the mission of the church. That's what we're called to do now, to help one another in our particular communities of faith and certainly beyond our particular communities of faith into the communities in which our churches sit, into the places where we reside, and where we worship, and where we see mission outside our doors. It's all still with us. Let's keep doing our work standing together. God has promised to be with us and the promises of God can be trusted absolutely. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Bynum, for that word. The virtual doors of the church are open. If you have been worshiping with us, with First Christian Church, either online or um, or, uh, or in person when we were gathered together, and you know that you would like to make this your church home, please type hashtag home in the chat. If you've never made a commitment to Christ or, and you're ready to do that, or if you've never been baptized and you think you're ready to do that as well, please type hashtag Jesus in the chat and we will talk about how to do that. And we will have baptisms. We will get back together. We will have baptisms together. So as the next song plays, please consider making First Christian Church your new church home. What I long for Holiness Is what I need Oh my, my, my Holiness Holiness Is what you want Is what you want for me Oh my Holiness
Amen. Welcome to the table of grace, love, and forgiveness, where Jesus is the host and all are welcome. The Greek word for this meal is eucharisto, which means thanksgiving. This is a weekly worldwide thanksgiving that's celebrated by all who have chosen to be followers of Christ Jesus. As we partake of this meal together today in the presence of the risen Christ, we renew our commitments as his disciples to reach out to a broken world in love, in compassion, to care for one another. For Jesus has the power to make all things new. And he works through individuals and communities who are committed to serve him by serving others. So you have a place at this table today. Come, take and eat. We don't stand alone here. The resurrected Christ is here with us, standing with us, standing for us. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord of heaven and earth, we ask that you bless us as we share this bread and cup together, just as millions of others around the world are doing on this day. May we be nourished by your unbounded love and encouraged to be your servants in the world. May the love of Jesus be in our hearts and may the spirit fill us with passion to be serving you. May all your people glorify and honor you, dear God, now and forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please feel free to use any elements that you have available. The most important thing is that we share this meal together. Come. Let's partake. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. When our legs are getting heavy and we're hanging down our heads, give us bread for the journey, give us bread. Guide our way as we travel, guide our way. Guide our way as we travel, guide our way. 
so many roads before us where to go is hard to say guide our way as we travel guide our way make us one with each other make us one make us one with each other make us one all the walls we've built around us may we learn to tear them down make us one with each other make us one lead us home to the garden lead us home lead us home to the garden home where we'll live with all creation find our place and never roam lead us home to the garden lead us home give us bread for the journey give us bread give us bread for the journey Give us bread. When our legs are getting heavy and we're hanging down our heads, give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread. Give us bread for the journey. Spread. Amen. So wonderful to hear our own band singing. It always makes me really happy. Thank you for putting that together. All right, we just have a few quick announcements uh, before we let you go. Screen here. All right. Sign up for the intersections. That's our weekly newsletter. You want to be a part of that. It's really awesome. It comes once a week. It has all the information you could ever think you might need to know about our church, plus more. So please, please sign up for the intersections if you have not. Uh, you can follow us on social media. We are at Concord FCC on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And our website is also ConcordFCC.net. Um, so make sure you write those down. Today, elders, we have a meeting at 1.30. I sent out a, a link late, late last night. So you should have gotten it this morning. Um, so be there for that. Then we have a very full week. Monday at 1.30 is the Disciples Women's Meeting on Zoom. Tuesday at 7 p.m. is the Outreach Meeting on Zoom. Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our movie discussion on Zoom. Um, and Meg sent out an email about that earlier this week. So make sure you look for that. Friday, uh, April 16th at 12 p.m. is Lunch and Learn on Zoom. And then Saturday is uh, at 8.30, House and Grounds not on Zoom. That's gonna be actually in person <laughs> at the church. So make sure uh, you put that on your calendar. Don't come to Zoom for that, come to the church. Um, and also at 10 o'clock, the book club will be on Zoom. And then please, after the blessing and the closing song, stay for the virtual coffee hour. We go into breakout rooms and it's a great way to like connect with other people in the church and say hello. I always enjoy it. So we hope you'll stick around for that. And Reverend Bynum, I don't see you, but oh, there you are. It's all you now. <laughs> <laughs> Receive this benediction. May you go out from this place filled with all of the hope and peace, the joy and love God holds for you. Go into this good and beautiful day, knowing that you do not go alone, but that you carry with you the community of believers and the living God. Go in peace. Amen.
Hey, man. So everybody, I'll switch to gallery view. And I think Dr. Bynum has gone off to uh, general board.